Good day and welcome to tonight's online webinar. The topic we will be handling in this webinar is how to create and maintain your company. Firstly, I'd just like to thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. For some formalities, before we get started, everyone is muted so that there are no interruptions during the webinar and so that can be heard by everyone. If you do have any questions, please feel free to type them in the question box on your screen. And what we'll do is we'll actually address these questions during the webinar. Alternatively, we will get to you, back to you after the webinar is done. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have a look at how to open your company, so your existing company that you created, and then also um, how to go about also setting up a new company. So once you go through the sign-up screen format and it's online, you will then log in. Once you do log into the system, you will then see the dashboard screen. So you'll then go to Company, Open and Manage a Company. From there, you'll see a listing of your companies. If you've only got one company, you'll only see the one day. If you need to add an additional company, you will see that there's an option to say Add Company. Alternatively, if you want to edit the existing company, you will simply go to the Edit option. Once you select the Edit option, it will actually bring up all your company information. So you'll have your company name, telephone number, fax number, mobile number, also the email address. So this email address will default to the email address that you use to sign up. If you do not want this to be the part of communication, so let's say if you're emailing your customers or suppliers, you don't want this to be the email address that you'll send up, you will then rather create another email address. So let's say I want my communications to come from sales at pastel I will then go and set up that email address and then tick the box at the bottom to say use this as email. Just ensure that this email address is a real email address so that if your customers or suppliers do respond back to that, you do in fact receive it on your side. Then from there, you've got your contact name. Okay, then at the bottom, you'll see your customer settings. So you've got the short links that you can click on, such as that. Alternatively, you will see at the top, you've got arrows where you can actually go to the size of the screen. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll have a look at the different types of settings that you can set up. So you'll have your additional details. So this is where you can put in your postal address. And this, this information isn't mandatory. So um, what's great about it, though, is when you are producing your invoices and your quotes and so forth, and you're sending this off to your customers or suppliers, you will then note on your, your actual invoices information will be complete. So then you've also got your company information. Um, so either you can put in the physical address there. Alternatively, what you can do is let's say I'm running a medical practice and I need to put in my practice number, you can in fact also put in that information in. Okay, then you've got your current thing, your tax number, registered name, registered number, tax office, so where you register for that tax, your VAT number, your VAT in period date, submission date, and then that period frequency. So your first VAT in period date is when is that submission due? So are you on a quarterly basis, every second month, every month? Go and indicate that date. Then you've also got your first VAT submission date. So does your financial year run from February? Does it run from June to July? Does it run from September to October? You'll actually go and indicate those periods there. Then you've got your VAT period frequency, as I indicated. So is it every month that you need to see your VAT returns? Is it every second month, every quarter? And so forth, you'll actually go and indicate that there. If you're not registered for VAT, then you won't actually put in this information. The next tab that we'll look at is your financial year. So what will happen is as you set up your company, the system will default to that period to the current period day. So if you need to go and recapture information for previous years, you can in fact go and set up that year by simply just clicking on the block and type, browsing for that certain period that it might be. And also if your period, the system defaults to the most common one, which is the beginning of March until the end of February. If you need to change that, you can in fact do that by simply browsing and going and selecting your specific financial period. What you'll also do then is you'll see that there's an option where you can tick a block, and this is just to indicate which is your current financial period. This will then also affect what your dashboard screen will display. So let's say you want to capture for previous year and also for the current year, you can then leave it as a current year. And then the, the dashboard screen will display a current year. Alternatively, if you want to press for previous period, you can click on that period, and from there, your dashboard screen will display that previous period. So note that your entire period is 
your financial years. So if you need to catch for previous years, you can in fact do that. Okay, and you can add as many financial years as you please. So I mean, this is simply a track of quite a few financial years, so unlimited, as you capture on the system. Okay, the next one that we'll look at is tax systems. So you'll see that we've made three tax systems available, so mainly invoice-based, payment-based, and also no tax. So the common ones are, well, the common one is your invoice-based system, so this means that is compensated for as soon as an invoice is done. Where payment-based is more on a basis of, let's say, an invoice has been processed, Payment has not yet been received, so therefore the, the tax um, component of that will not be compensated for until the payment has been received for that invoice. In no tax, um, it's simply if you're not registered for tax, you do fall below that threshold. Please note that when it comes to tax, make sure that you do get advice from your local tax authority before actually going into listing um, no tax or otherwise your payment base. Alternatively, invoice based is a common one where you're working according to your 14% and it is done according to any invoice done. Okay, so from there you'll be able to select as a zero rated, standard rate of exam. So you'll see at the bottom I do have an option where it says Botswana. So we do allow for different um, processing for um, different countries. So it's not most currency, but if let's say I've got a company that I need to set up in Thailand, so let's say it's based in the UK. So I don't want to work in brands, I clearly want to work in pounds, I can simply set up the UK, set up what is the um, percentage there. And then what I'll do is I'll actually tick that block to indicate that as my default. So what will happen is whenever I'm generating the invoices, it's still calculated at that 20%. And okay, you can add as many different types of ta tax types that you'd like. Okay, the next one we'll look at is rounding. So this is according to your things. Do you either want to round it up or down to the nearest 10 cent to the nearest 5 cent? You can actually go and indicate it on this tab. Okay, so you'll see there's an option to round up. So round up to the nearest 10 rand, either round down to the nearest 5 rand. Normal rounding or no rounding at all. Okay, then you've got your regional settings. So this is how many decimal places do you want after your quantity, so after that comma, two decimal places, three decimal places, you'll actually go and indicate that. Then you also have your value decimal places, so this is where the cents goes, how many um, spaces after the comma do you want? Do you want three digits or three decimals? You can go and indicate it there. Then you've also got your currency symbol, so as you'll see there, it is RAND. If you are setting up to another country, you can simply go and indicate that certain um, currency symbol. From there, you'll also have your date on it. So day, month, year, year, month, date, you can actually go and select that. So this is just for your reporting. How would you like those dates to be displayed? Then you'll see your document setup and logos. Right on top, you'll see your document setup. So this is what's great about the system is it gives you warnings as you're processing. So warn when item quantity falls below zero. So this means I've loaded a certain quantity of my item. I then invoice the certain item. What will happen is as soon as it goes below zero, the system will actually notify you that it has gone below zero. And at this point, you then can either go and order more. Alternatively, the system allows you to go further and process that invoice. So just a warning start the system that we have set up. Then also warn when cost is zero. So if you set up an item and there is no cost to that, the system will warn you, it will allow you to go further, but it will give you that warning that the, the cost um, is zero. Okay, then we've got to brand in your invoices and statements. So, if you have a logo, put your logo on your quotes, your invoices, your statements, and so forth, and you can actually position it. You can either indicate it to the top left or the top right. And from there, you can simply just browse for, for that specific logo. Note that it has to be in one of the following picture formats. Okay, so if, it's, if you do have it in a Word, in Word, in Excel, whichever it might be, copy that over into Paint, which is a common Microsoft product, um, from there, you can simply copy it into there and save it into one of the following picture formats. Okay, from there, you won't see your logo view as yet, but once you do save it and go back in there, you'll be able to see that, that logo that you set up. Okay, then you've got your report layout. So, the report layout is 
You can simply download your report design application from the Microsoft Online website to customize your report layout. So this means if um, I want to change the, the current setup of how the quote or the invoice looks or even my statements as well, I can from there go and download the report design and you can find this under the Downloads tab on the main screen. You can find that option once you download that, you can customize your report once you've, uh, and once you've made that customization, you can simply drop down and go and select which report it is that you want. So you'll see I have quite a few different types of reports. In your case, you might only have one and you can actually go and select that one. Okay, the next one that we'll look at is our scaling balances. So this is how do you want your agents work on the system. We basically give you two options. So either you can work it on a monthly basis or alternatively on a daily basis. So a monthly basis means you've agreed with your clients that they only have to pay you at the end of the month. Alternatively, your second option is you work more with cash clients. So that means COD, they have to give you payments as goods are received. You'll actually go and indicate that. So you'll see that at the bottom there is an option to pick the monthly block. So if you pick the monthly block, what happens is let's say I invoice on the 15th of the month. That means that invoice will be due at the end of that specific month. If I remove that tick, what will happen is if I invoice on the 15th of the month, that invoice will then be due on the 15th of that specific month. Okay, so just the difference is the one will go according to the, what is the end date of that month or alternatively it will work on the actual date. So if it's the 15th or the 17th, the invoice will be due on the 15th or the 17th. Okay, then you've got your statement messages. So um, this is optional. We've provided there if you want to go and set up statement messages for your clients. I mean, your statement refers to a very familiar that you get. You get monthly statements from your clothing accounts or um, your grocery accounts and so forth. Just give you an indication of, you know, what have you invoiced, what have you paid, and so forth. Um, in some cases, though, you would want to set up different messages. So let's say on the current one, you'll say thank you for purchasing with us. You know, until 30 days, um, indicating your, your account is 30 days after that and can make payments. You know, until the point where you get to 121 days, just indicate that I've handed you over to, the attorney, uh, to my attorney. Please make sure that you make payments. So you can actually go and set up those different messages on them. Okay, then the next one we'll have a look is at customer document messages. So this is for your quotes, your invoices, your returns, and receipts and write-offs. So what messages do you want to display when actually sending this off? So let's say my quotes, I wanted to indicate my terms and conditions, or I want to indicate that the quote is valid for 30 days. So instead of actually going in and generating a quote and having to retype this message each and every time, I can simply populate this message on the, the screen that you're having a look at now, so every time I bring up a quote, it will always say they valid for 14 days. And you can put as much messages in here. So if I can just give you an indication, if you drop down, you can put quite an extensive amount of messages. So if you want to put in your terms and conditions, you can in fact do that. Then you've got custom invoice. If you want to put in banking details, you can in fact go and do that. And also your terms, um, you can also put that in on the screen. And same with your customer returns, receipts, and rights if you can add your messages. Then we've got the exactly the same, but it sits on the supplier side. So you can also go and put in messages there. Okay, then we've got document numbering. So if you have moved from a previous system or some sort of manual system where you keep track of a certain numbering process, you can, in fact, come and set that up on the screen. So let's say I've finished on invoice number 57, and I want to continue from 57. You can then go onto your invoice side and change that numbering so that it goes from 58 to calculating forward. Okay, and you can do that on all the different documents on the screen. Okay, then the next one is document description. So if you want to change the document description according to the company's requirements, you can in fact go and do that. So you'll see that we identify the document type. From there, you can say, what is the original name? What is the copy name? Okay, so in some cases, let's say you don't want to indicate tax invoice, but rather just invoice. You can then just go and remove the tax part of it, and same for your copy tax, you can remove the tax part of it. 
Okay, so that's just according to companies' needs. If you need to go into your investors' needs, you can, in fact, go and do that. And what we've done now is we've actually set up your company. So what will happen is when you actually generate that invoice or the quote or the statement, you'll have complete information on it. You'll have your company's information listed there. You'll have your, your tax number and so forth, all listed on that specific invoice. So up and above that, though, we, we'll, we're also going to have a look at notes and attachments in the system. So what we've done is we've created a facility where you can add attachments. So this means normal keeping a, a whole drawer of different documents, the filing cabinet. Um, from here, you can simply scan in those documents. Um, so whether it be an, an Excel spreadsheet, a Word document, a, a presentation, um, you know, PDF documents or even an image. From there, you can add all, all of those types of images on the screen. So all you need to simply do is you need to say Add Attachment. From there, you'll click on Add Attachment again. Browse for where you've saved it. Once that's done, you can simply say Close, and you'll see that attachment is there. So what's great is even if you're not at the office and you need to, let's say, pull out some tax information, or let's say your BE certificate, um, from there, you can simply just come in here, Click on that image, and from there you can print it or even email it. Okay, and you can manage the categories as well. So we set up um, certain categories. If you want to delete some, add additional, you can in fact do that. Okay, and we've also created a notes facility. So if the, these notes populate on your dashboard screen under your to-do list, so if you want to set up birthdays of your employees, you can in fact do that. So what will happen is on that specific date, when you go to the home screen, that message will populate. So what I'm going to do is, and you can also complete it. So what I can do is action date will be today. I can then say birthday. And this can be anything. So from a point of where you need to order in goods, alternatively, you need to phone your accountant or bookkeeper, um, you need to do your file submission. From there, you can back to the So I'll simply say save. I'll then close it if I go to my dashboard screen now, so home dashboard. On that home screen, I'll see there's one view um, company notes. From there, I can view the details of it. I can then action it once it's done, complete it, and save it. And you'll see then that company notes is not there anymore. Okay, then we've also enabled the, the ability to load assets. So, this is so that you can keep track of where your assets are, what type of assets you have as well. So you can simply just go company assets, list of assets. From there, you'll see a listing of it. Alternatively, you can say add assets. You can put in your description. So I can simply say TV. What category is it? The categories in my business online are clearly there for additional, uh, sorry, additional features for you to make use of. So if you don't make use of it, that's perfectly fine. So you can set up a task, you can also set up a location, so main office is a Joburg office, Cape Town office, you can in fact go and put in that information. Then also what date did you purchase and what is the serial number? So especially in the case of if you're working with a cell phone, you issue a cell phone to, to one of your employees, from there you can actually go and put in the information, so I can go and indicate cell phone. Specific, iPhone 5, category, information technology is perfect, location, main office, serial number, where was it bought from, iStore, what was the purchase price, what is the replacement value thereof. Okay, and what is the current value of that actual Asset. Then from there, you've also got the following options. You can set up a location. So you'll see throughout the system, there's user find fields, mainly under your customers, your suppliers, your items, and then also under your assets. To set these up, you can in fact just go to company and then use the find fields. So I'm going to show you how this can be used. So I've set up my assets now, but I require more information. So I need to know who have I actually issued this, this phone to. So from there, I can simply save that asset. I can then go to company use the find field. I can then go to my asset tab. From there, I can say, okay, where's the location? Well, I can specifically indicate um, the 
I can then also indicate what was the date that it was issued to. From there, I can simply save it. So now what will happen is I can actually go into that specific asset, I can edit it, and then you'll say, who was it issued to? I can then put in the information. I can then also put the date that it was issued. So if I've issued this today, I can actually indicate that type of information. Once it's done, is I can save it. So I'll know then that I've issued this to that certain person on that specific date, and if there are any changes, I can actually just go in and make those changes. Okay, so that is on the user defined field. As I said, this is situated throughout the system. We clearly provide this just to have more, so if you require to obtain or keep more information, so let's say I'm going to use the medical practice as an example again. I'm running a med medical practice and it's important for me to have, you know, the medical aid number, who they belong to, so who the medical, medical aid company is, and so forth. I can go into my user defined field. From there, and my customer, I can put in that information. So just an example, where you put in the information here, when you go into your cu customer and you set it up, that information will then display there. And you'll then just need to put in, so who is the false detail, what is the need to play number, and so forth. Okay, so you'll have the same for suppliers, for your items, and so forth. So you'll see um, on this high side, it will appear exactly as it is now, text field 1, text field 2, and you'll then just be required to take that out and put in the information. So I can put in the location here. I can from there save it. If I go into my supplier, I go to my list of suppliers, I can then go and edit one of my suppliers, and then if I go to the user defined field, I'll actually see that there is an option where I can put in the location. So if I go use the defined fields, I can say location and that's the program I can actually put in Johannesburg. And from there I can simply just save it. Okay, so it's just to get that additional information that we might not have had the option to put it in on, on our original field. Okay, then you've also got an option where you can import data and export data. So if you're looking at importing data from another system or alternatively if you've been keeping manual track of it, um, you can then import that information. So all that's required is have that information in an Excel spreadsheet, convert it into a CSV file, or alternatively, even if you have it in a CSV file, import it into my business online. So you can go and select um, what is it that you want to import, from there also what is the date format, and you'll simply then just browse for where you've saved it. You'll see that there's an option that says use my USB, um, CSV import file contains column heading. So this just indicates your top heading does it mean you have one or does it just immediately provide the information or below one another? And what's great about the importing, there's no um, certain sequence of information, so what you'll do is you'll actually map the different fields. So if you've got your customer's name in field 5, you'll actually go and tell the system that's my customer name. Okay, and then you can also view import data. So you, from there you can go import data, go and see, you know, what is the format, how to go about actually importing this. You can also then go um, custom map fields and so forth, and we'll give you an indication of what you can import and so forth. Okay, so we've reached the end of this webinar. I'd like to thank you for taking the time once again to attend the webinar. Have a lovely day further.